We like to watch the grey squirrels uh, that come and play in the garden around the back here and our neighbour two doors down um, feeds them nuts and um, fruit and whatnot uh, and we thought we'd do the same uh, but we were trying to work out where to put the feed, it's a bit tricky in this garden so I bought a feeder, this is it, bought on Amazon uh, it's very well made, it's made of steel with a plastic tube it was quite expensive, it was about 30 quid but uh, got five star reviews so we thought we'd give that a try uh, and as I say, I've been um, struggling to work out where to mount it first of all I thought I might mount it on the tree but to get it high enough uh, you can't really see it from the window of the house uh, or from the upstairs windows and also I thought the cats might run up the tree and catch the squirrel so my next idea was to get these bamboo poles I've got two of these and uh, mount the feeder on the top of the pole like that one pole slightly bigger than the other and it should fit inside like that so the idea is I'll cut off a section of this one push that down into the earth and then we'll have this removable piece which will pop out with the feeder on the top and then we'll be able to refill the feeder and drop it back into the hole This is the pole that's going to be sunk into the ground and I've marked it off. This top bit, because it's quite badly split, I'm going to cut off just below this, um, I don't know what you call these jointed bamboo, but um, wherever that new bit of growth is I suppose. So I'm going to cut that off there, um, but I'm not going to do that until after I've hammered the pole in because uh, I may damage that, that top bit in it, but I'm going to get that uh, uh, a nice clean cut across there once it's in. Uh, this mark here is uh, ground level. So this piece here is going to stick out above ground level. Those two sections will be clear on their own and this bit will have the other pole, which is just there, sitting inside it. Um, so that height plus the height of that pole will give the height of the whole thing. And then this bit here I'm going to cut off because that's the bit that's going to be buried under the ground and that's probably a bit too much. I'm just starting off the hole um, for the uh, the sunken post here uh, with this bar. Um, give myself a fighting chance before I start knocking the post in. Uh, if you look at the bottom there, you can see that I've wrapped a couple of layers of parcel tape around the bottom of the um, bamboo. And the reason for that is uh, I had a bit of a trial with the offcut, um, knocking it into the hole. And as you can see, uh, it split very easily um, because there's no. Um, a join bit at the bottom which on the one hand uh, is a bad thing because it, it allows it split uh, but on the other hand as it's open it makes it easier to push into the earth. Uh, the other thing that I've done is I've chucked a load of water down that hole as well because the earth is as hard as iron and uh, with a bit of luck that might soften the earth and allow me to knock that in. Um, so I'm just going to give that a little tap on top of there with a sledgehammer. That is making its way in. I think what I'm going to do is put a piece of wood on top of here uh, and, uh, and hit that with a sledgehammer so I don't risk shattering um, my way through there. This piece of 3 inch fence post is ideal for that job. I resorted to hitting the top of this without the piece of wood in the end because I, was, I found that the, um, the fence post section was taking so much of the um, so much of the energy away from the hammer that it was just bouncing around all over the place. Uh, but I've uh, succeeded in not splitting the post uh, and I think that's far enough in and it's, uh, it's fairly solid I mean, it's not like we've got a tire house to it so uh, I think that's going to be fine I've uh, given the earth a good old bang down around it as well with the sledgehammer uh, it's down to the mark, yeah, it's down to past the mark actually that I drew on it uh, the mark for cutting it off is here just underneath this whatever these are called um, where it will be open so I'm just going to saw that off there now I've uh, finished trimming and, um, and sanding that so there's no rough edges on there. Uh, I've given the bottom of this um, 
pole a little clean up as well because that was a little bit raggy. Uh, and so with a bit of luck, that should just pop in there. Oh, yeah. oh there we go. Find the best position. Satisfied with the way uh, that that pole's positioned and it's it's snug, but I'll still be able to pull it out like that um, to fill up the um, the nuts into the feeder. Just pop that back in again. Find the oops, there we go, find the right position again. I think it's about about there. Oops, <laughs> not quite tall enough. Make a little mark. And I've got to mount the feeder on the front of there. The feeder's got these two uh, keyhole slots um, that you would ordinarily put a couple of screws in. Uh, that's never going to work with this bamboo. Uh, so I've got this large uh, Jubilee clip. I'm going to put that through the holes there uh, and shape it round there and then round the top of the bamboo and tighten it down. I've got the Jubilee clip through the top of the feeder there and uh, round the bamboo pole. There's the mark that I made. And now obviously I could tighten the Jubilee clip down with um, a normal Jubilee clip tightener or a posi drive screwdriver, but uh, with the amount of band that I've had to wind through, I'd be here until Christmas. So I'm going to get that lined up on the mark. That's about there. Uh, and then I've put a 7mm um, socket in this uh, rack gun. I'm just going to whiz it up. There we go, good and tight. Just as a final thing, uh, I've trimmed off the excess uh, bit of band from the Jubilee clip and I've folded the end around and uh, underneath so that the uh, squirrel doesn't cut his little paws on it. I've got this uh, jute rope, uh, got this from B&Q and uh, I'm going to tie that from the bottom of the feeder on the bamboo pole in a sort of swag back to the fence over there and then hopefully that uh, that way we can uh, have some access for the squirrel to get to the fence because uh, he might struggle to climb up this bamboo pole I might be wrong he might be well able to climb up the bamboo pole uh, but hopefully the cats won't be able to so I'm just going to go and tie this on on the fence on the other side uh, and then tie it on the top, onto the top of there I've attached the rope to the fence now and then I've tied it onto the uh, onto the bamboo and you can just see that I've put a nail um, through the bottom bit of rope there so it doesn't slide down the pole. Uh, and there's the feeder in position. So all that remains now is to put some nuts in it. I've got this uh, mixed uh, squirrel and chipmunk feed from uh, Amps and one on Amazon. Uh, and there was a big bag, um, oh, I don't know, about that sort of size for about a tenner. Uh, so that should last for some considerable time. Well, depending on how many squirrels we get. So I'm just going to pop that down. <laughs> do with three hands really to do this. Oops. Okay. Let's go and get another scoop. Okay, there we go, filled up, two scoops. All back. All ready to go. Now we just wait.